the coronavirus crisis has underlined the vulnerabilities of LGBTI individuals and community. I am well aware of the particular problems with which individuals have been burdened. In one EU country, a counselling service has seen a 50% increase in calls, while concurrently an LGBTI hotline reported an increase in suicide attempts by a third. In another country, youth homelessness has risen because of student dormitories closing and students losing their part-time jobs. I called on member states to pursue their efforts in protecting all European citizens, including those who are the most fragile, to make sure we leave no one behind in our response to the crisis. Our new LGBTI plus equality strategy will address this too, as well as the work the Commission has been doing over the past four years. We have seen some progress, as illustrated by the report on the list of actions to advance LGBTI equality, which we published today. Attitudes have improved. Today, 76% of citizens agree that LGBTI people should have the same rights as heterosexual people, compared to 71% in 2015. And the law has improved. Today, marriage equality exists in 14 European Union member states and registered partnerships exist in another eight. But there are still serious obstacles. According to a new survey from the Fundamental Rights Agency, 42% of LGBTI people in the EU feel discriminated against over the past year. Compared to 33% in member states where support for LGBTI equality is high, Discrimination against LGBTI plus people is truly an EU-wide problem. As we mark the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia this Sunday, I am convinced the European Union will do more. This is also why we are having a dedicated virtual citizens' dialogue with you to ensure that we continue to address the needs as we fight the pandemic together. Sunday is also a time for celebration of our diversity and our uniqueness as individuals. On that note, I wish you all a great Idahot, wherever you are this year. Thank you very much for these wishes. And uh, above all, welcome to, these, to this exceptional uh, citizens' dialogue, which is virtual but nonetheless live, um, to mark Sunday's International Day against homophobia, biphobia and transphobia. Uh, welcome first to all of uh, the people around Europe who are listening to us uh, today and who will have also the opportunity to ask questions. And um, on that, a reminder that you can listen to us in English, but also in German and in French. And uh, big thanks to our interpreters for that. Um, and finally, of course, welcome to uh, Commissioner Helena Dali. Uh, it's great to see you in three dimensions, in addition to in two dimensions on the video that we saw earlier. Um, uh, Commissioner, uh, you are at the initiative of uh, today's event, and that is um, also because you are indeed the European Commissioner for Equality. Uh, this is your job as of uh, December last year, but you have uh, plenty of experience in dealing with uh, LGBTI plus issues. Uh, indeed, you were um, the Minister of Equality uh, for a number of years since uh, as, long as, as long as back as uh, 2013, and that has also shown quite a lot of results. The, the country that you know best uh, has risen uh, enormously in the, in the ranks of LGBTI uh, plus equality over the years and now has um, uh, been on top of the rankings for, for, fifth, for the fifth consecutive year. So really a, a heartfelt, um, heartfelt welcome to you. And um, let's jump right in maybe with, um, with the first question. So um, what do you think is the impact of uh, the coronavirus on the LGBTI community? That would perhaps be a very topical question to, to start with. Yes, my thoughts are with LGBTI um, people in, in situations of uh, confinement, whereby they may be in confinement uh, uh, with uh, homophobic parents or, or relatives, maybe, or who may be in situations of violence. But it's not just my thoughts, which, which are with, with, with these uh, LGBTI plus people. Uh, we have been in the field during during this crisis. 
when I say we, I, I mean uh, the Commission has been in the field in the, in the sense that uh, we worked every day um, communicating with individuals, communicating with parliamentarians who uh, work in this area of policy. We have been working with um, civil society, NGOs um, who, who, who uh, work also in this, in this area of policy. And therefore, we have been tracking and, and seeing what the situations are. And, and I must say that we have encountered some dire situations. If, to give you an example, um, some LGBTI people have ended up homeless. They have ended up uh, victims of violence because, uh, also because of the confinement, and therefore the problem uh, was um, uh, compounded. Uh, in some member states, there were budget cuts um, for NGOs which work in this area. So obviously, that's going to have an adverse effect on 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 the work which which they do. But then, concretely, for instance, uh, we had a situation whereby. Um, uh, the hormone therapy for, for a trans person was stopped because of emer the, 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 um, the coronavirus emergency. But we know that that can be life-threatening also for, for, for a trans person. So, so we've been seeing these um, realities. And what we are doing, uh, of course, we are, we are monitoring the situation every single day. As I said, we were in the field, albeit virtually, but, but the Commission was, was very, very present and, and understanding what is going on. And now what we will be doing is what we have learned from, from this exceptional situation. As many, many people know, we shall be presenting an LGBTI plus strategy. It will be the first strategy of the Commission in this area of policy. So, uh, and we are in the, in the consultation process right now, but what we will be doing is we will be feeding in all that we are learning now in this exceptional situation whereby we have seen that um, minorities um, have, have had their situations compounded. I mean, everybody had a situation which, which went, you know, uh, <laughs> haywire and, 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 and people are suffering, uh, many people are suffering, maybe the majority of you. But then when, when, when you have minorities such as the LGBTI plus uh, minority, we have seen that, that uh, uh, in some cases the, the problems are, are greater. So we, we are also learning from, 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 from these realities and uh, feeding what we are learning into our new uh, strategy. So, um, uh, obviously, we didn't, at the beginning of the year, we weren't envisaging this. But I think this is going to make our strategy even richer now with, with this experience and with, with us having concentrated a lot of our work during this time that we were teleworking and video conferencing and all, all that. And so we have, we have uh, a, a more, a more um, solid solid um, presentation because we have included all, we are including all this. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's very good to hear that there is a silver lining to all the difficulties that at least we can learn from them. Yeah, and we should always try yeah. to learn from, from <laughs> situations. But uh, that doesn't, of course, uh, as, as I, thought, I said in the beginning, my, my thoughts are, are with these people who uh, some of them are, are really, really in a very bad way. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe that would be a good um, opportunity to pass to uh, one of the first questions that, that uh, we have received. This is from um, Pedro Mendonça, who asked via Twitter, how can we stop the instrumentalization of the LGBTI community in this and in other crises, and at the same time eliminate the rise of discrimination during difficult periods? Um, what do you think um, we, can, we can do for that? Yes, of, co of course, um, instrumentalization and discrimination is, is never acceptable. I have, in fact, written to all um, uh, relevant ministers in all the member states to highlight the situation, to highlight the, the, the question which, uh, uh, which, which you have just put to me about, about this um, uh, reality 
and we are following up on on these d d this communication which i i sent to to all the ministers in in all uh, the the um, uh, member states uh, but also uh, uh, as i said we we we're, we're having this strong strategy by by the end of the year to see that um, uh, these things these things uh, do not do not happen but there's a lot of work which we have to do i mean uh, I, I don't think that it's it's very difficult to understand that uh, uh, one must not discriminate we we are all equal nobody chooses how they are born so so how do i as as a legislator discriminate between one person and another you know so for, for me it's 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 a no-brainer that the, there should be no uh, discrimination whatsoever. But then to actually have legislation which 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 discriminates, uh, there's a lot of work which we have to do there. But but uh, we, but we 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 must uh, make people understand that we are all equal and we are all have our rights. We all have our dignity to live as persons in, in whichever way we, we need to live our lives because of, of how our realities. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so for many people, it's not difficult to understand, but there, there's some people who, I mean, as you can see, we can see from the FRA survey, which is very, very worrying in spite of the fact that there has been some progress in terms of acceptance. I hate to use that word because who are we to accept or not accept someone, but, but for want of a better word. Um, but but uh, there has been a steep rise in discrimination as well. So, so uh, obviously we are very, very worried about that. And we have to be more vigilant on uh, on member states, uh, and that is why I, I communicated with, with with the various uh, ministers and why we are doing the um, follow up. And and also once we have the strategy, we will seeing that the strategy is being adhered to. But there's a lot of work which which has to be done, and um, uh, the president. Uh, speaks of a uh, union of equality every time you know so 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 the commission is 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 really working hard to reach this this union or, or to have this union of equality but the fact that we are uh, speaking about it every day the fact that there is for the first time a commissioner with the portfolio for equality is, is a very strong message to Europe, to, to, to the European Union. So um, um, we, are, we are working every day on this union of equality. And when we have these cases in various member states, of course, we, we engage and, and we do all that we can so that not one single person in the European Union is discriminated against. Nobody deserves to be discriminated against. We, as I said, we are all born equal and, and uh, on that line of thought, on, on, on that philosophy. This is how you know, we have to legislate and, and we have to present our policies with that always in our mind. Mm -hmm. So equality is a, is a work in progress and it's something that we, we work on um, very, very much, also including through this uh, LGBTI strategy that, uh, that you mentioned, Commissioner. And maybe that would be an opportunity to go deeper into one topic that's, that's maybe particularly complicated, namely that, they are, that there are people out there who suffer not from just one type of discrimination, but from several types of discrimination uh, at the same time, if they happen to fall into several minority groups that, that, uh, that are sometimes discriminated against. And that is a particularly difficult uh, reality to, um, to manage. And this, this question of what's called intersectionality um, is indeed a very important one from a policy perspective. Uh, how do you think um, is important that is going to be in this new LGBTI strategy that, that you mentioned? 
Yes, thank you for this, this question, because I, I find in, in my work that, that quite a lot of people um, put groups or minorities in, in sections and as though they were a homogeneous group. You know? But it's not like that at all. Uh, a person may be gay, may be a migrant, may, be, may have a disability. So we are many things. We are not just a, a straight person, a gay person, a trans person. No, we, we all have these intersections. Okay, so, so we have to be uh, careful when we are, for instance, when we are working on our strategy that we don't put everybody in, in one basket. We can't say LGBTI plus. Okay, so no because there are these, these various um, strands in, in one person and we have to be we have to be cognizant of this and we have to make sure that we address the, these uh, multiple realities of the the different people we are addressing as i said it's not one one homogeneous group but um, uh, many diff people who are different and who have, have different uh, needs and and much more much more uh, than that so so the intersectional approach if, if you really want to do something which really helps people and 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 which really addresses uh, the difficulties and the problems which which uh, people this, these certain people encounter, then you have to dig deep to 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 look at these uh, intersections. But also, um, we we the intersectionality we can also interpret it in the sense of what we are doing. We have uh, a task force for equality, whereby. Uh, there are people in all portfolios who are mainstreaming equality in all sectors. Okay, so even there, there's the intersectionality between portfolios then, okay, whereby um, the perspective, the equality perspective is, is, is introduced into policies or legislations or uh, at, at the very first stage so that you wouldn't have, for instance, if we're speaking about the Green Deal, if we're speaking about um, digital, uh, it's not like uh, an afterthought. Like you have your policy, you have your strategy, and then you say, oh, I, I, I didn't put in the equality perspective, and then you put it in, and cause that, but that won't be any good. So these people are there at the outset. From the very beginning, where they look at every input from the equality uh, perspective. So then there's inter intersectionality at that level uh, as well. As you see, uh, we are trying to leave no stone unturned when it, when it comes to equality. And, and it's not straightforward because there are many intersections which we have to address. But that is when we can say then that we have done a good job. And all the time, but we are learning uh, more and more. So I always say that, that nothing is written in stone and, and, and we, it's always work in progress mm -hmm. because things happen like we can see with this coronavirus uh, thing, you know, and, and there you, you have new realities and you start learning new things on how to address these these so it's always it's always uh, work in progress so you, our work is never done uh, al al although we we want to do a lot and achieve a lot but still you cannot say okay this is it we're done we we've, we've done everything because it's 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 never like that we are dealing with human beings we are dealing with the quality of life of the different groups in our um, society so 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 that that is something which which evolves also according to the environment which we are living in according to the context 
which which we are living in according to the period of time according to who would have said I'll, I'll, I'll repeat this that in january or february that we, we will be in in, in this uh, reality today but let's look at it also of course there's a lot of hardship and there's going to be even more hardship you know so once we uh, start picking up the pieces um, but I think uh, there are also many, many, many lessons to be learned, and at least we will take that positive out of out of this this very bad situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for these explanations. So intersectionality may be a, a, a complex policy approach, but it's ultimately really about ensuring the equality of everybody in the in in our policy process. So um, that's. Uh, that's a very important thing. Um, and maybe uh, if we can now um, have, a, have a question about a, a specific situation that, that we received um, via, uh, via Facebook from um, uh, a, a Facebook user called Ratikova, mm -hmm. um, who's asking, Dear Commissioner Dali, what is your stance on the Hungarian government's plan to ban legal gender rec recognition for transgender persons in Hungary? Do you think it goes against European values and policy? Well, that definitely does go against European values and, and policies, but I will not uh, comment on, on a particular um, uh, member state, on the, on the legislative proposals of a particular member state. But, but uh, of course, um, uh, rights of uh, trans persons are, are protected in, 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 the, in the European Convention of Human Rights and have been addressed uh, in, in the Court of Human Rights and, and, and trans persons have, have got redress from, from, from the European Court of, of, of Human Rights. So, so, so uh, there, there is an, an instrument, but, but it's, it's, it's very, very appalling that today when we know all that we know that nobody is a, is a trans person through any fault of his or, or her own and that we still uh, see these things uh, i mean it uh, for me it is it is incomprehensible especially when when we know again i will refer to the to the fra survey on the high rate of suicide for instance there is among trans youth and 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 obviously this is because they are not accepted in their societies or by their families or at, they are bullied at school so now we have no excuse we have the science we have the data we have the research which is telling us you know and when i see that that data and I say, why are we doing this? Think of the parent, think of the mother of that trans child or, or teenager who committed suicide or who comes sad from school every day because he or she is being bullied. So I really cannot understand how people with such responsibility as legislators can do this when we know what we know i mean if this was 60 years ago or 100 years ago when people uh, knew much less than we know today you know and they were doing these things nobody said anything but but today it's atrocious that when we know what we know and then we see that there are legislators amongst us who are proposing such legislation okay the the commission can if it's the case can issue infringement procedures start in, uh, infringement and all that but for me that is not the way also to, I mean we, we we really must make legislators understand that trans people are people like me and like you and they deserve to to lead a good life like we all want to be happy we all want to to 
be on 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 the job that we want to do to to to, to work and 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 have have a family and and this is what you know all people aspire to i think so so why make life difficult or impossible i would say because the trans people who, who who commit suicide is because they think that life is pos it has become impossible for them why why do we do this it is people with a mind and the heart who are legislating I, I for me it's it's I, I i really i really find this very very difficult to understand as a legislator myself i as 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 a minister uh, in my previous life i presented um, many many laws in 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 this area of policy and i'm not saying that i had an easy time because because um I had a lot of opposition, but I, I spoke in this way to, to explain, tell me what are we doing wrong and tell me why you, you can be right in wanting to discriminate against people because of their sexual identity or because of their sexual orientation. And then, and then I, I could see from the country I know best that when we proceeded, because I could proceed, because obviously the government has the, the uh, majority in, in parliament. And, and I, I could see then, even from surveys, which, which we had after uh, um, uh, um, uh, legislating different pieces of, 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 of uh, legisl legislation, People realize that the day after we uh, passed the law, for instance, uh, on marriage equality or, or the, lang the, the legislation on trans rights, on, on, on sexual identity, uh, when we outlawed um, ther um, uh, reparative therapy, and people realize that you know, the sky didn't fall the following day. Life went on as, as usual. And, and it's actually, for, for many people, this ha doesn't affect them at all. You know, so, so if it doesn't affect you, why support uh, people who want to keep LGBTI plus uh, people out of the way and, and saying, no, you don't deserve rights because you were born trans or because you were born gay or, or because you were born intersex. I mean, how, can you understand this? Because I find it very, very hard. And, and uh, therefore, uh, we, we, we must, we must um, continue speaking about these things because I am sure that even these people who are um, presenting legislation in, in this way, when they think about what they are doing, probably in their heart of hearts, even if they just maybe ask the question when they put their heads on their pillows at night, what if he were my son? What if, it, if she were my sister? Would I, would I uh, pro uh, com continue to legislate in, in this way, to discriminate in, the, in this way? So I, I, always, I always say that we must uh, put on the shoes of the person we are trying to understand and walk a few paces in those shoes. And that is when you will be in a position to speak about the reality of that person. Unless you do that, you have no right to speak for that, for that person because you don't know what the experience of that person is. Whatever situation, I'm not speaking now about LGBTIQ reality or no, whatever situation, before you speak about it, you have to. And that is why I said during these two months of, of COVID, we were engaging every day. So the commission was present 
every day uh, with, with these com um, uh, communities so that then we can understand and then be able to come out with policies and with legislation and, and with, with, with uh, recovery plans which, which uh, take in this reality because we have engaged, we have studied that reality and we could understand it. And only when you can understand a reality are you in a position to do something about it or not do something about it because you can cause harm also by omission, by not doing something. And, and that is what, what I, I say to, to member states who, who have not uh, legislating, that even there, um, obviously, there is a problem, not only in member states which propose legislation, as you have uh, mentioned, but even by ignoring the reality and not and not addressing it. Mm -hmm. um, thank, thank you very much um, indeed, and it's, and it's good to hear that uh, change is possible and that change is uh, for the better, not only for the people affected, but also for, in fact, for whole societies, mm -hmm. um, if, uh, if if we do the right thing. Um, and maybe if I can pass to a question about. Um, a, an issue that is uh, re that really concerns um, a, a lot of people in, in the LGBTI plus community, um, and that is a question from Stamatis, who asked by uh, Twitter, "What is the Commission doing for recognizing the rights of same-sex parents in the EU?" Uh, he mentions that a birth certificate issued in Spain with two same-sex parents is not recognized in Greece, and this discriminates against EU citizens and children. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, the Commission is in, in contact with the Greek authorities on, on, on this uh, um, uh, situation. But as you may know, there was the Coman et al. case whereby the Court of Justice confirmed that um, a person's status remains the competence of a member state. Okay, so, so there is there, but also member states must uh, comply with EU law. Um, so uh, we, we, we have to see now how uh, we can move on on this. I mean, EU law such as um, freedom of movement, okay, so they must be uh, recognized in, in all uh, member states, uh, but uh, in, in, as far as their status is concerned, uh, that, is, that is the competence of um, member states. But when there are such cases, we uh, engage uh, with the particular member states and, and we try to see uh, how to um, solve the, the, the situation. Mm -hmm. I see. So some advantages from EU law and definitely a dialogue that uh, that, oh, yeah. that we um, that we uh, lead with the member states. Um, uh, very good. We we only have a time for a couple um, more questions, but um, maybe let me let me take this um, one from uh, Ilga Portugal, the International mm -hmm. Lesbian and Gay Association Portugal, who asked via Facebook, um, dear Commissioner Dali, considering that Friday is the International Day of Families. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you consider the impact of the COVID pandemic is affecting the freedom of movement of rainbow families within the EU? Uh, a related question to what we just discussed. And your first part of the question was? Uh, sorry, it was uh, considering that Friday is the International Day of Families. Mm -hmm. um, how do you consider the impact of the pandemic is affecting the freedom of movement of rainbow families uh, within the EU? Uh, well, uh, Right now, nobody is moving. From <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I haven't seen my, my family for, for two months, uh, but we, we must, we must uh, celebrate on, on this family day uh, the diversity of, of uh, um, families. Um, for me, uh, a family is not only a family which is related by by blood, but I think that the most important thing, whether it's it's a, it's a family related by blood or not, I think it's the love, which makes a family. Uh, so in whatever form, 
that that family that family has uh, should be treated as a as a family uh, because it's 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 a nucleus of of people living uh, together and therefore they may must have uh, their rights and uh, like all all other uh, families so so we must be um, bolder maybe in recognizing and not um, be um, deterministic in the sense of what makes a family and what does not make a family okay because there are are, are you know there's the, the old concept of the traditional family but that's no no longer we have so many different forms of families uh, we have single parent families we have um, uh, same sex uh, marriage uh, couples uh, with with children um, so so there are many different forms of that and this is what we um, should uh, celebrate on the international day of uh, of uh, families and and true as we were saying corona has had a, a disproportionate effect on on um, uh, lgbtiq uh, families okay so so that's that's a reality uh, too but when it comes to uh, eu legislation in terms of freedom of of movement of course that should that uh, is eu law which every member state should adhere to mm -hmm. that's a very clear message for the international day of families uh, so that's 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 good to hear um, we, we're nearing the end of the time that we've got, but maybe one um, last question. In fact, I, th I think we can take two questions together because they're quite similar. And they're about uh, a pretty difficult um, issue. Uh, so we've got both, uh, both of these questions came via Instagram. And um, the first is from Kangurong S, who asked how the EU Commission will react on the so-called LGBTIQI free zones in some Polish regions, villages and towns. What um, has the EU perhaps already done against it? And a similar question uh, from uh, Poca Haunted uh, asking who does, what does the EU plan to do against other EU member states that accept LGBTQI free zones? Uh, first of all, like I, I condemn very, very strongly these uh, LGBTI, these so-called LGBTI free zones. And I must say that I cannot fathom, I cannot understand how you can exclude people from zones until, unless it's a, a nuclear zone <laughs> where, <laughs> where nobody can, you know, or it's a zone which is harmful to you, but but to allocate a zone in, in society, in the community, which is free of other people? How how does that how does that work? I mean I, I, I really find it hard to understand. Obviously we are all bound by the uh, to respect the, the fundamental rights uh, charter, but it seems that uh, this is not being observed and, and article 21 is very clear on, on prohibiting any form of discrimination um, what i can say here is that eu law um, says no discrimination um, in we are covered with eu law on discrimination in employment so my question is if there's this um, LGBTI plus free zone. Then, what does the if if I work there, and what does my employer say? I you can't come to work because I'm located in an LGBTI free zone, and you cannot come to work because you are gay or because you are trans, or whatever you know. So how does that work? Or are these LGBTI free zones specially located in areas where 
there's no uh, work going on, there's no industry, there's no shops, there's no... If I work in a shop there and I'm gay, so I can't go to... So that is where uh, we have the protection of the EU, of EU legislation, that you cannot be asked not to come to, to work. Uh, because you are gay, for instance, so so that would be discrimination in on in on uh, in employment. So so there is this kind of of uh, protective legis legislation which protects uh, this from discrimination. But but I really I I, I am very very concerned about these. Not least because I un I don't understand the logic. I have been trying to, to think what, you know, but, but I, I, I don't understand the, the logic of this. And it's, it's a very, very sad situation that in 2020 we have legislators who have these things on, on their minds, things which well-meaning people don't understand. So it's back to you know what I was saying before. What good can come out of, of, of this? Because we should legislate for, for the good of people. We should legislate to improve the lives of people. Which, uh, how, how are we improving the lives of people by uh, designating an LGBTIQ free zone? Are they are LGBTIQ people attacking people, and and we want to, you know? I mean, I'm 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 trivializing maybe the the, the situation because sincerely, I I I just don't understand what is what is um, behind the these moves, and uh, the the commission is very 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 concerned about about these these uh, these realities and unfortunately they are they are happening uh, but you know we, we we can condemn we can use the the law which is exist but we can do more we can do more and and obviously we are taking all this into account when we are working on our our strategy and we will do all that we ca that we can obviously within our competence uh, as, a, as a European Union, so that we put an end to, the, to, these, to these things. But also, as we were saying earlier, uh, it is important that we have this dialogue and that you know, we engage and we, we, we try to um, make people understand that that is not the, the right way to, to move on by um, undermining and setting aside and ghettoizing uh, other, other, other uh, persons in, in the community. We, we, we see it happening with other groups, with other minorities, with ethnic m minorities, for instance. You know? So, so it's, it's happening all the time. So we still have a long way to go uh, and and the European Union is is not just an economic union. We must remember that it's a union of values. It's a union of equality. So it is up to us to see that uh, we 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 don't have these these um, uh, situations. And we will do all that is within our competence to do to change to change um, this mentality. And, and I say I don't understand uh, because probably there are other motives behind these actions. Because when, when you see things in, in the most natural way, in the sense that he or she is a person like me, so why do I want to make his or her life uh, more difficult. Life is fragile for everyone. We all have our problems. We all have our difficulties. So why do we, because we have the power to legislate, 
in this already fragile life, which we all have, huh? why make it more difficult for certain groups? They, these groups, these people we are speaking about in their everyday life, they have their ups and downs, they get sick, they, they get depressed, they, like everybody else. So why compound, why use legislation to compound the realities of, of, of the, these people? I, I, it's, it's really unthinkable. I don't understand how people can think these things. You know, if, if we all think of one another as, as one big human family, uh, we all want the best for our families. We all want them to be in good health. We, we want to love them. We want to be happy. Uh, so, so, so why do you impose sadness and depression on people just because you can? That's my question to these people who present and propose this type of legislation. And I hope to get an answer, but I won't hold my breath. Indeed. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, I, I'm afraid our time is up for, for today, and it's maybe a bit of a difficult issue to, to, to finish on because, of course, it's, it, it touches the re difficult realities in, in some of our member states. But we've also had messages of, uh, of hope, of looking at everybody as an individual as opposed to categorizing people uh, needlessly. Exactly. And uh, we've heard messages of determination, which I think is a, is a great um, is a great message to take out of uh, today's um, today's citizens dialogue. So let me just uh, maybe thank everybody for for participating in in today's event and wish you again a very very happy Idaho bit on um, on Sunday. Thank you, Commissioner.